Hello, my name is Nigel Bowden. I'd like to welcome you back to Lesson 5 of our Microtik scripting series. This is Part 2. Uh, in our previous video, um, Part 1, uh, we were actually looking at the Web Monitor script and we uh, we had that running, but we hit a little bit of an issue which we need to investigate and fix in this episode. So I'll jump straight back into our coding demo and we'll have a look at how we fix this. So I'm just going to go back to VSC. We're back in Visual Studio Code here. And just to recap, the problem that we were having um, is I'll just run the script again. And we can see that when we hit a failure with this, so in this particular instance, we're still blocking the scripting.com website so that when we try to retrieve its web page, the script will fail. Um, and the, the the whole script exits. It doesn't just it doesn't carry on to try and attempt to um, uh, retrieve the web pages from the other sites. And this is the thing we need to fix. Okay, so the way that we actually fix this, I'll just make this window a little bit smaller. We've got a new command that we haven't met before, and it's called the do command. Uh, it's actually a do on error command and so what we what this enables us to do is to wrap an area of code in a do um, command block and we can um, uh, we can actually exit the commands within the block but if the, any of the commands fail for any reason we can then use um, uh, the uh, the other branch of the do command the error branch to actually um, execute some other code but it still allows the error to be trapped and the script to continue running so just to sort of demonstrate what I mean by that if I put the do command in here do open a bracket there and we have a we'll have a new block of code here so I would just indent that there I'll get rid of the second curly bracket there we go and we just need to put the on error statements at the end here and I'm going to paste this in from my other screen to make sure I don't make any errors with this here we go and I'll just copy that there we go let's paste that in there Okay, so this will trap the error and allow the script to continue running. So we've got this do block here. So we've got do and then open a, um, a block to run some commands. Then at the end of that command block, uh, we've got this additional on error um, uh, branch. And so what happens is when this slash tool fetch command fails, this will um, cause an error which would normally cause the script to exit but what happens in the case of an error is that this branch here will uh, be executed so what will happen is we'll try to get a website it will fail and then the script will actually move on to this on error branch and execute the commands in this code block here okay so in this case we'll basically just say uh, we'll send a, a debug message to say we've had a problem and the other thing that we do is that the um, fetch result variable which is the variable it's an array which contains the result of the fetch um, command uh, will actually uh, create a uh, an array and we'll just put one entry in there we'll just put in the status um, field which is the one we check to see whether or not uh, a website has been retrieved successfully so that when we do our check down here on line 36 um, the the uh, the status will be failed rather than finished and and that way we will trigger uh, an error and record uh, an alert so hopefully that that all makes sense so what I'll do I'll just hit save here just to save that to the Microtik and let's try it running again. I've still got the block on for the Microtik scripting.com website. So let's give it a go again. Here we go. So I'm just going to run it again. So here we go. So we can see that there's a pause while the uh, retrieval of the website fails. And then hopefully it should continue running for the other sites. So there we go. That's uh, successfully continued. So we can see we um, were doing a test for marketingscripting.com. It then timed out and said it wasn't able to retrieve the site. And then we got uh, a load failure message in our debugging. And then it moved on to do Google, uh, Facebook and the other sites that we wish to retrieve. So that's a really nice way of trapping an error 
and um, being able to enable the script to continue running even in the presence of a, a command error. Um, I think if we go across to, well, so if we just have a look at, um, have a look at the global variables, we should hopefully see that that now has, has put a, an error message into the Telegram queue. So let's have a look. And yep, yeah, there's obviously been quite a few tests and things I've done previously, but you can see we've got a uh, a message here saying that um, the website failed. And so that would be picked up by our um, Telegram script later on and would, would cause an alert uh, on the app. OK, um, so so that's a really useful technique um, for when, when you're doing your coding. If you get things that have failed due to network condition problems, maybe, you know, DNS lookups, obviously fetching web pages, then uh, this is a great way of dealing with those and allowing the script to continue to do other um, activities for you. Um, so I think that's uh, pretty much it. Um, the only other caveat that you, I wanted to uh, tell you about when you're using this do and on error um, command is you have to be very careful when you're using it because if there was a um, syntax error anywhere within this code, so anywhere within the, uh, the do block, then this would trigger an error and you would always go down the on error branch. So if I you know, had made a typo here so that one of these commands was incorrect or every time we ran the script, it would always pick the on error command. So the way to, um, sorry, the on error branch. So the way to actually use this is to have your main block of code functioning and test it thoroughly to make sure it works before you wrap it in the do on error so once you've um you've tested it you're happy that the syntax everything operates as you expect then you can wrap it in the do on error um command um and you know you know you're not going to be having any uh, syntax errors in your main code that are triggering the uh, the error condition um so that's that's pretty much it for um, the the script it's running as we expect now. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the only thing we need to do is to disable the debugging here, set that to false, and save that. And then the only thing that remains is obviously as with all of the other um, scripts, we uh, need to add it to the scheduler. So we'll go system um, scheduler and. I've actually I've actually already uh, already added it uh, when I was testing prior to uh, to making this video so you can see as with the other entries I've just given it the name of web monitor which is just the the label name of the scheduler entry and then down here we're just doing slash import webmonitor.rsc so that's ready to go and uh, normally would we would have this enabled and in this case I'm running it every 15 minutes but because we don't want to be running it and generating any alerts before we're ready to feed it into our Telegram um, script, then I'm just going to have it temporarily disabled for now. And when we uh, do the Telegram script in the next um, lesson, then we'll, we'll enable that and we'll start doing some testing and see how those um, behave when they're running. So I think that's pretty much it for this particular video. Let's just go back to uh, the slide deck, make sure we've covered all of the points that I wanted to cover. So we've created our script called web-monitor.rsc. We've tested to make sure that we... No, in fact, no, I don't think we did actually verify we'd got the log message. Let's just have a look at that very quickly. It's probably in there. Um, yeah, we can see actually we did see uh, an error message uh, to say that we were seeing a failure for microtickscripting.com. So we can tick that one off the list. Uh, we've got the insertion of an error message into the Telegram queue, which we did actually verify. Uh, we've stored it onto the file system of the Microtick. We've got it set up to run from the scheduler. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. If you want the code for this, as with all the other examples, if you go to microtickscripting.com, you can find um, the slides and the uh, the code there. So you can sort of copy and paste those in if you're having problems doing this for yourself. So that's it for this particular lesson. So the website monitor script is done, ready to roll. The only thing we've got left now is in lesson six. We're going to pull it all together with our Telegram 
uh, script which will allow us to do the telegram alerting using the input from the three probe scripts which we've uh, previously created so that should be a pretty uh, interesting episode and um, yeah sort of be the culmination of everything we've been working on for the past five uh, videos um, so hopefully it's all been very useful very interesting don't forget if you want to know more about microtech scripting in general uh, and dive into a lot of these topics in a lot more detail it's definitely worth checking out the book on amazon uh, get a copy of it because we cover all of these topics plus many many more um, which i just don't have the time to cover here uh, and it's a really good useful book uh, reference book to have on your uh, technical bookshelf anyway uh, thanks for joining me look forward to uh, joining you again very soon for lesson six uh, take care bye for now